hate to break it to you, but mainstream gay shit is white. And blackness operates a whole lot differently. I'm the ignorant intellectual, and I'm here, and I'm queer. Blackness operates a lot differently and far more than gay shit, but let's just stick to that for today. When I think of whiteness, I think of white supremacy. And when I think of white supremacy, I think of Sonia Renee Taylor's amazing reframe of white supremacy as white supremacy delusion, heavy on the delusion. Now I might get called transphobic, queerphobic, and all of that for what I'm about to say, but mainstream gay shit is white as fuck. And the bottom line is that blackness doesn't operate according to the rules of whiteness. Whether we talk about language and conjugation of words and accents and dialects, blackness is its own thing, including blackness when it comes to queerness. Imagine a royal family event, like the royal family in England. The pomp, the circumstance, the flamboyance, the queerness. Another topic for another day. The grandiosity. But deeper than that, think about the things that demand us to basically lie. Like the fact that they're trying to sell us this lie that the royal family is all white. Whatever that means. Because uh, Archie, Archie had him shook. Charlie was scared that baby was going to tell all their business. Remember the delusion. This brings me to mainstream gay shit. The demands to pretend that we weren't who we were before we are who we are now. I think about when black folk honor the fact that often, often black folk honor the fact that even if we trans, we had a whole other existence often before we realized we were trans and or transitioned, whatever transition means for you. But whiteness demands that we pretend that we never were who we were before. It's like I, I was watching this show on Tubi called Trans World Atlanta, black as fuck. And I actually found myself getting mad emotional because of the way in which they crafted their lives felt so much more authentic to me than the demands of whiteness, which were erase that you had a girlhood, pretend like your mama never gave birth to a daughter, pretend like you weren't assigned female at birth, pretend like you didn't have a name you had before you had a name, the name that you have now. But Trans World Atlanta honored the fullness of who we are. And that's what I mean when I say white gay shit, mainstream gay shit is white. Uh, Trans World Atlanta allowed themselves to be who they were. Some of them were former members of Delta Sigma Theta, and when they transitioned, they rescinded their membership. Some of them were beauty pageant queens in the past. And even though they transitioned into most of them male, uh, female to male, they didn't deny who they were. But I feel like often when we do that in bigger spaces and mainstream spaces, honoring the fullness of who we were and are now, we get labeled shit like transphobic or this term biological determinism when really it's just the truth. Mainstream whiteness basically demands that we lie. And that goes in line with whiteness. Whiteness wouldn't be what it is if it were honest. It'd have to admit all of the lives it took. It'd have to admit all of the lies it makes us tell. Um, much like the royal family demands that we buy into this pure white shit. I mean, they go so far as to botch the chromosomes of the people in their lineage. And then if those people come out in a particular way, they cast them aside. Like whole ass human beings, all to keep up this lie of pure whiteness, whatever that is. So this is what I mean when I say mainstream whiteness, mainstream gay shit is white. And it makes me think of white supremacy delusion because it has people out here who are honoring the fact that I had a whole existence before the one that I currently experience. And if I honor that existence, if I talk about that existence, if I say things like, even telling the truth about being able to say somebody is trans. I mean, so much is critiqued that makes people feel like they are losing their mind. I remember being at a conference, kind of not a formal conference. It was a very, it was dope. It was actually in the Redwood Mountains in California. And we were talking, it was mostly trans and queer people having a conversation and somebody used the word female bodied and another person who was white admittedly got upset and was like, well, what is female body? And it's like, female body is what you were assigned at birth. Like, why do we have to buy into this delusion that says you were never once this thing or honoring that you were once this person equates to what people are calling biological determinism, which means that we believe, or biological determinism as a definition suggests, this belief that biology determines your gender. Nobody's saying that, but I think that blackness just operates way different than that. If you follow, if you follow black trans women, for example, most of them honor that they were assigned male at birth. Follow white trans women, many of them have this weird relationship with honoring who they were. 
I just think blackness is far more honest than whiteness. And because whiteness dominates media and the narratives that we get nationally, mainstream, gay shit that is mainstream is white as fuck, which kind of pushes blackness to the side. Or when someone does have a black frame and a black way of existing, whiteness labels them all these things that actually don't fit. Just because somebody is honoring that they were assigned male at birth and they, they have a lens of male socialization, that does not mean they're transphobic. Actually, it was transphobic because you're trying to get people to lie like they are who they are not. There's a mandate to almost sever the self when it comes to whiteness, when it comes to mainstream narratives. Hack off who you were, cut away this thing, sever that piece of you, and construct something that is really not authentic to who you are. And one thing about blackness, it works very damn hard despite these systems to maintain its authenticity. So when I'm sitting in spaces that are black, I find so much more comfort, even when we, blackness also allows you to wrestle with concepts because having conversations about gender inside of the English language is already limiting. The moment you gotta assign language to a thing, it dilutes it. And then when you overlay that with a colonized language or a colonial language to try to describe something as divine as gender, Oh my gosh, that's a hard thing to do. And so when you're trying to do that in a construct of forced whiteness, you just feel like you're losing your mind. You feel like you are being demanded to lie and sever and cut off parts of yourself. And I'm, really, I'm just not really interested in that. I'm really not interested in that. Mainstream gay shit is white as fuck. It erases blackness. And then in that erasure, overlays it with shit like transphobia. And I'm not saying trans people can't be transphobic, but what I am saying is that a black person honoring, for example, myself being a trans masculine person, honoring the fact that I have a girl socialization, honoring the fact that I have a uterus. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Honoring those things is not transphobic. It's not biological determinism. I'm not connecting chromosomes to gender, but I'm also saying there's a cultural conversation that needs to be happening around gender when we talk about transness and queerness. It's not just biology or it's not just you putting us back in a binary when we're trying to expand this conversation. And I think blackness inherently allows for expansion. It's actually the more lit of the two, if you ask me. I mean, I wouldn't want to be white, but I was just thinking about that. And I want to have a conversation and record a video to, to really highlight just how limiting whiteness is. Even when it's talking about gender outside of transness, we could be talking about cisgender. It's still limiting. And so I'm noticing as somebody who is often perceived as male, but does not have a male socialization whatsoever. This masculinity, this maleness is far more tight and rigid than one might think. But I think that's because whiteness demands that it is. It's almost like the moment you are given the golden ticket of masculinity, there's also a concession of freedom that comes with that. There's a, a, a lack of freedom around expression there's a lack of freedom around emotions. And I'm talking about emotions, not anger and volatility. I'm talking about tender emotions. Um, there's a lack of expansion inside of most things that are sold to us as what we should strive for or the golden ticket. Um, and that makes me think about how mainstream gay shit is really white, which inherently means it's really tight and doesn't allow for movement and freedom and existences in, in a beautiful way, in a divine way. It's like whiteness is the opposite of divinity. Yeah. So if you like what you heard, like, comment, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. And always remember, this is a space where you are invited to think about your thoughts. You don't have to agree with me, but at least know why you think what you think. Peace. Peace.